everybody. Yep. Good day, folks. This is a great Judy at Green Pastures Farm. I'm not going to be looking at the camera too much because we're driving. But just where are we driving in? Well, we're uh, taking. We're coming back from delivering a load of South Pole Cross heifers and getting a young couple started in the grass-fed beef business. Anyway, coming back through Illinois here, we just we're actually headed toward um, Champaign. And uh, we've, we've been in Illinois pretty much the whole day coming here and going back. And there's a lot of talk about how, you know, this, this global warming thing, and a lot of people think it's BS, and other people say it's a real thing. But it, I, I'm going to go down the middle of the road. It doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. They're saying, you know, it's being caused, you know, a lot of us by the, the cows farting and burping and, you know, all this stuff. And if you look across the landscape here, all we see is corn and soy, corn and soy. And, of course, it's all being combined. It's all being taken out now. And all you see is bare land, period. Bare soil. The whole state is going to be bare soil when this crop's taken out. And we were at a conference here uh, last two weeks ago. And I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Ray Archuleta asked the question about, you know, what about the government's uh, programs involved in, like, subsidies for farming practices and, and such, and how, what did people think about that? And that question was posed to myself and Joel Salatin and Daniel and Jordan Green and Jim Garish. And, but anyway, at the end, Ray had, her, I thought Ray Archuleta hit it pretty good on the head. He said, um, well, what if, you know, they're talking about this carbon, get people getting paid for collecting car or building carbon on the soil and measuring it and the farmers will get paid so much a year for the carbon and all that. But it's very hard to measure. Uh, it also doesn't reward farmers that have been doing good for the last 20 years. If their carbon's already up at the top, sorry, you don't get paid anything. Even though you're doing a fantastic job, you don't get paid anything because your carbon's at the peak. So, but Ray had a really good, I thought, a one-liner. He goes, what if... All this bare soil in the Midwest, every bit of it going in the winter, we're already seeing people out here disking corn stalks and shooting in hydrous ammonia into the soil. That's fall tillage. So they got a bare field all winter long. What if every single acre that was harvested had a green cover crop planted on it in the fall? So all this bare land that is now not catching any rainwater. It's just shedding off because there's nothing there to hold the rainwater. Now, when you say hold it, what do you mean? I mean, when rain falls on it, it soaks it in. This crop... And, 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 the, and the roots help hold well, it. Well, yeah, the, the, the roots on the green, the, the green cover crop. There is... We haven't seen a cover crop since we came into Illinois. Not, nothing. And we went, I don't know, 250 miles, not one single cover crop. And we keep hearing in this thing about how cover crops can heal the world. Well, people better start planting them. There isn't anything being planted. And so, you know, Ray's deal was if you take a satellite imagery of your farm in the fall after the harvest and it's all brown, there's no cover crops, guess what, chumps? You don't get paid nothing. You don't get any subsidy. If your farm is green, you got cover crops going after, then you get rewarded for that. If we had all this bare soil covered with green, the water we would catch, the cooling effect that we'd have on this global water, it, it would halt it in its tracks. Green draws moisture. It builds moisture, transpiration from the leaves. Bare soil out here, thousands and thousands of acres of it, it doesn't hold anything. What are we doing? I mean, They've got the they've got the machinery to do it. Why aren't they putting out cover crops? Don't and in some states, they're even giving the cover crop seed away. They still won't plant it. They still won't plant it. What is the deal? I don't understand. It. But it's because of subsidies. The guys are making enough money. They don't. I guess they don't need to plant it. They don't care about the soil. Uh, I had a guy tell me the other day, not the other day, it's been several years back, 
and this is a terrible thing to say, but he said it, he's a crop farmer, he said, Greg, I don't need good soil. All I need is a medium to hold the seed in place, and I'll give it everything I need. I'll give it the fungicide, the pesticide, the herbicide, the fertilizer, I'll give it everything it needs. Well, that's a really poor, poor view to take of being a farmer trying to leave the land better than when you found it. Folks, we got an issue here in the United States, and it's a water infiltration issue. If you keep land covered with something green, a green growing leaf that has green growing roots, putting out root exudates, holding the water in place, building soil, that's where it's at. There's a, I mean, some of the costs of these cover croppers, there was a guy in Indiana, no, it was in North Carolina. They, there was a guy that gave a talk last week in Tennessee. It was a talk that Alan Williams did, Dr. Alan Williams. This guy in North Carolina put out cover crops. He right was behind. getting around 250 bushel. Right, right behind after tilling. What's that? He was planting, tilling it and planting it all in one swap. Right, all in one swap. So he had a cover crop out there. He rolled it onto the ground with this great big no-till corn planter. It had a roller on it. It rolled that in cereal rye onto the ground. And then he planted right into it in one pass. And uh, it was unbelievable, the crop he got. He got like 250 bushels of an acre. No herbicide, no fertilizer, nothing. It just, everything was there. And the weeds were suppressed by this cereal rye crop that he put on the ground. So he had a nice mulch. It all died when he rolled it down. And this cash crop of corn came up through that. But here's the amazing part. They got a rain that was so bad from that hurricane, I forgot which one it was, that came through on the coast down there. It put his whole farm under eight foot of water for like, I don't know, it was like a week or two weeks. The water went down, and he was able to get in there, and like a week or so after the water left, he's able to get in there and plant. He put a, a crop out in that ground, and his neighbor tried it, because the water was off of his field, he buried his tractor because he didn't have the cover crop. He didn't the have the he didn't have the humus. He didn't have the root structure to hold up the equipment. So to me, it's just a no-brainer. We've got to get the ground covered and keep something green on it. If I was a row cropper, I couldn't wait to get something on the ground behind my, you might say, bare soil. And I'll tell you how far Brazil is ahead of us. I, I listened to a guy from Brazil. He was a cover cropper. And they are so emphatic. Now, not all of them, but some of them are so focused on this. When they combine the beans right behind, I mean immediately behind that combine, is a drill, a no-till drill putting in a cover crop. And if that no-till cover crop drill, anything on it breaks down, or they can't immediately drill behind the combine, they stop combining that's how much they are focused on getting something green in behind those soybeans it just it just makes sense so to cover the land have a green living root out there in the winter time so our soils don't blow away we catch the rainwater does it all end up in the rivers down at the Gulf of Mexico and the inputs the inputs are just skyrocket down uh, they're actually putting money in their pockets. They're putting money in their pockets without the aid of the government. I mean, you take the government subsidies away from government, they're not making anything. They're barely breaking even because the input cost is so high. It's crazy how much money it takes to harvest a bushel of corn off your property. I mean, everything's just skyrocketing in the prices. So, anyway... It's just, you drive across this state, it's got rich soil, and all you see is bare soil, bare soil, bare soil, no green. It just doesn't make sense. So a, a country is as prosperous and as wealthy as the United States, and we have this terrible, terrible soil being exposed all the time to elements. It doesn't stand well, and it's not going to. It needs to be fixed, and we can fix it. It's a simple solution. So I'm going to climb back off, climb down off that soapbox, but I just wanted to, I don't know, it's just frustrating driving by and seeing all this bare ground, and you know it's going to be that way all winter long. It doesn't have to be. One pass across that, the no-till drill is done. You know, put some cereal rye out there, some brassica, something to keep that ground covered. 
and, All right. and put carbon into the soil. The carbon in the soil, not up in the atmosphere. Uh, all the input costs are just going to absolutely plummet. And, and the insecticides and herbicides. I'm not going to need them. There's going to be profit back in farming again. Oh, no, not profit. Yes, that all dirty word, profit. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take it and end it right there. Those of y'all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And, uh, oh, I'll see some of y'all at the Stockman Grass Farmer uh, meeting in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. That's coming up. The Multi-Species Grazing School, I'll be teaching that. If you're interested, hit our website, greenpasturefarm.net. There's a forum there under uh, conferences where you can sign up. Y'all take care. See you down the road.